So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another episode of Backroads Arizona. In this video, I'm actually turning one of my sheds into a garage. I ended up getting this little two-seater sand rail and needed a place to put it, and I didn't want to put it in the garage because that would have kicked my wife's car out of the garage or my truck, and neither one of those was gonna happen. So I had the same problem when I bought my first Razor, not wanting to take up a spot in the garage. So I got this enclosed trailer, insulated it, and made it its garage plus its transportation and this setup's been working great so i didn't end up getting a lot of footage on the actual build of this guys but i am going to go through and explain it because i really didn't know how it was going to come out or whether it was going to work so i wasn't sure whether i was going to do a video but it actually works pretty well and it might come in handy for something you guys are doing as well obviously it still needs some paint now this shed is 10 feet wide by 13 feet long now the main determining factor is probably going to be whether the door height is tall enough for what you're trying to put in it. This sand rail has a very low profile so it worked well for me. My doors were just barely over six feet tall. I did look up the spec overall height of a razor and it's about 74 inches. So if you enjoy this video and it gives you some good information make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a wide variety of DIYs. My whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. So let's get to it. So I didn't need much to build these barn doors. I used a couple pieces of plywood, some 1x3s, and some metal roofing I was able to get my hands on. I ended up getting some door hinges, the handle, and some door latches from Amazon. And I think all of that was around 50 bucks. So the first step to this project was to remove most of the front paneling and doors off of the old shed. So depending on the shed design, you might need to support the upper rail for the door with something while you take the front paneling off. On my shed, there was a top bar over the door that went completely from side to side. So it supported it just fine without the paneling. I was careful during the disassembly because I was planning on reusing a couple pieces going back together. So I did end up using the skinnier piece of paneling I took off to extend the side of the shed a little bit and went ahead and anchored it back into place on the top and the bottom. So the only reason this worked is this shed is 10 feet wide because you do still need a little bit of front paneling, probably six to 12 inches, just for structural reasons, side to side, to support that bar that is over your door. I removed both doors and got those out of the way before I had gotten my hands on the metal roofing, I was thinking about trying to use the doors and the front paneling for the outer shell of the barn door. I didn't want to go any wider than four foot for each barn door, just because I didn't want to have to seam two pieces of plywood together. So I used some metal I had as another spacer. I put one of those on each side because I was about four inches shy of making those two four foot doors fit. I ended up using some two by sixes to reinforce the corner of the shed on the inside. I used some L brackets to attach the two by sixes to the reinforcement for the side of the shed and then cut a couple two by fours at 45 degrees to attach the two by six to the floor. And I did that on both sides. I was almost gonna put a beam across the top as well, but that upper bar that was supporting the doors was actually pretty tough, so I decided not to. I just attached the heavy duty door hinges to that two by six with some long screws from the outside and then use some shorter screws on that thin plywood to attach them to the door. So because of the price of plywood right now with COVID, I got a little thinner sheet than I would have if it had been cheaper. I ended up using some one by three to reinforce the back of these things so they wouldn't warp. And I had hung the doors and left them for about a week, which made them a lot worse than what they were to begin with. I clamped the pieces to the front, marked out with a pencil where I needed to do the cuts, and along each side of the 1x3. So when I moved the boards to the back side and clamped them, I knew where to drill and anchor them. So I was able to get some old metal roofing for practically nothing. Right here I'm just making a cut with my grinder because the one was going to be a little on the wide side. Once I got those cut, I just anchored them to the plywood with some short screws. Once I put those one by threes on the back side and I attach the metal roofing to the front side, there's practically no warpage left in the board. And I overlap the corrugation of the metal roofing so that the outer door holds the inner door tight all the way down. 
Once I got those anchored, I realized because of the corrugation of the metal roofing, I might get water inside the shed. So I found this little L-shaped sheet metal in the rain gutter section at Lowe's, and I grabbed a couple pieces and just anchored that. So if it does rain, the water is going to go on the outside of that corrugation instead of the inside. I bought these spring-loaded latches off of Amazon. I think I paid about 20 bucks for them. They're a half-inch dowel pin with a spring load, so it holds them shut. And then I just used some miscellaneous brackets I had for that pin to hold into. So that's going to wrap it up for this project, guys. I actually got this shed for next to nothing because I found it on Craigslist. Come tear it down and take it, and you can have it. So I did that, built a floor for it, and it's been used for quite some time. Then when I got this sand rail, I didn't want to store it in the garage and I figured if this project didn't come out good, I wasn't out much as far as the shed goes. So I figured I'd give it a try and it actually worked out pretty well. So if you've got a riding lawnmower or just anything that needs a little bigger door on your shed, you can probably make it happen if you have the shed. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information and some ideas. And if so, make sure once again, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. Later.